Survivor Vanuatu premiered on September 16th, 2004, and for the second time in four seasons, the teams are split up into men versus women to honor the culture of Vanuatu. And Vanuatu's culture was on full display in that premiere, as it was mostly Lapevi, the male tribe, that got to partake in the ceremony, while Yasser, the woman tribe, got pushed to the side. The tribes didn't have the walk in the dark night to find their camps. Rory got annoyed with his tribe on the way there, while early season fractions began to form on Yasser as well. The next day, Chad shocked his tribe and the viewers with his prosthetic leg. At the first immunity challenge, Lapevi had the early lead over Yasser. Her. All they needed was for Chris to get past the balance beam. Chris's epic collapse allowed for Yasser to make a comeback and steal the first immunity of Vanuatu. So, this should be easy. I mean, Chris is already not exactly the most athletic guy in the world, and to be the sole reason why his team lost immunity had to be enough to send him home, right? First person voted out of Survivor Vanuatu Islands of Fire. Brooke, need to bring me a torch. Yup, unbelievably, Chris managed to avoid being the most laughable first boot of all time, as the older and out of shape guys, consisting of Chris, Rory, Chad, Sarge, and Bubba, formed an alliance before the season even started against the stronger and younger guys, and they chose to target Brooke for being the laziest out of the four in the minority. Knowing they're in the minority, the strong guys desperately tried to find a way into the majority, who called themselves the Fat Five. On Yasser, we see two sides start to form, as one side is led by Amy, and the other side is led by Mia. The opposing sides are classified as the older woman versus younger woman, even though Amy was in the older group, while Lisa was in the younger group, despite Lisa being 44 and Amy being 31. Anyway, Yasser would win reward, but Lepevi would go on to win immunity, sending Yasser to their first tribal council. Going into tribal, Dali appeared to be the swing boat between the two sides, with Eliza being the target for the older group and Liam being the target for the younger group. However, not wanting to put her faith into Dali's hands, 21-year-old Eliza teamed up with the older group to save herself to take out the swing boat Dali in a 5-4 vote. Dali, tribe has spoken. Despite voting with the older group at the last tribal, Eliza still connected with the younger woman more and pledged her allegiance to them once again. The age divide on Yasser escalated as Mia and Twilight got into a heated fight. You take the martyr and you play on that role. If you were not here, we would still have fire and shelter and food. That's it. You, we tell you, you stay here five minutes, then your asses go down in there in the ocean. So don't give me no food, bitch. Because I will work your butt. It's your only card. Keep playing it. At the immunity challenge, Jeff announced that both tribes would be going to tribal council to vote somebody out. The team that won the challenge would compete for individual immunity, and the winner would not only be safe at their tribal council, but would also get to save a player at the opposing team's tribal council. Lepevi won the challenge, and John K won individual immunity, securing his safety from the Fat Five. John also got to spend the day at Yasser's camp to help him with his decision. The producers were probably really hyped that John won, as he was literally a part-time model spending the day with an all-female tribe. Maybe he would use his good looks to his advantage? Maybe one of the females would try to make a cross-alliance? Well, none of that happened, as John didn't mess around at all at Yasser, as he wanted to know what the alliances were straight up, and the woman eventually caved, telling him that there was an older and younger woman age gap. On the Pevy, Rory was terrified that the Fat Five would turn on him due to his loudmouth personality, but at Tribal, the Fat Five held strong and voted out JP in a 5-3 vote. JP, job is spoken. At Yasser's tribal council, not wanting to stir the pot, John gave his immunity to Amy, who he knew wasn't in any danger whatsoever. Due to their fight and general disdain for each other, Twyla and Mia were the targets for each side, and it looked like we might get a 4-4 split. However, Lisa, finally realizing she didn't belong in the younger group, flipped to the older side to take out Mia in a 5-3 vote. Mia, tribe is broken. Thanks. Kick ass, ladies. With two big flips happening at both of Yasser's tribal councils, nobody knew who they could fully trust at this point. But Yasser didn't have to think about another tribal, as they won both the reward and immunity challenge, sending Lepevi back to tribal council. Brady and John knew it was between the two of them, so Brady tried his best to make himself valuable for the tribe and tried to catch some fish. However, he brought back a small batch, which ironically, might have made him seem even less useful to the men. And at tribal, even John sides with the Fat Five to send home the legendary Brady Finta. Brady, tribe has spoken. 
The tribes must pick a tribal chief to begin episode five. The men choose Sarge, while the women choose Scout. The role of these two is that they will be tribe captains for the upcoming tribe swap, with Scout picking the tribes and Sarge getting to choose which tribe he would lead. In the end, the new Lepevi tribe consisted of Sarge, Chad, Chris, John, Julian, Twyla, while Yasser 2.0 was Amy, Lisa, Scout, Leanne, Eliza, Bubba, and Rory. The tribes then competed in their first challenge, to which Lepevi won, and got the chance to bond as a new tribe over Pringles and beer. On Yasser, Rory and Bubba knew they were in deep trouble, and in an act of desperation, Bubba tried to reach out to his old allies to protect him. Curious. Think about the merge. Lepevi would once again win, sealing Bubba's fate, as even though Rory was more annoying than Bubba, Ice Queen Amy could not overlook what Bubba did at the challenge, sending him home in a unanimous vote. Bubba, Travis spoken. Knowing he didn't have much to lose, Rory didn't hold back and gave Yasser a lecture on fairness. God, Rory is such a gem. On the Pevy, Twyla and Julie knew they were obviously in trouble for being the only two females on the tribe. However, Twyla bonded with the older men on the Pevy, while Julie used her sex appeal to her advantage. I like flirting. I flirt all day long. It just comes naturally. It's just like with me. I don't know. I've just, it's how I connect with people. I don't know. It's just a natural thing. It's my butt, though. Nah. It looked pretty good. <laughs> I, mean, I took a quick peek, but uh, I wasn't going to stare at it, but uh, it looked real good. Uh, I mean, if you got it, sunbathe it. Lepevi would once again win both reward and immunity, sending Yasser to their second straight tribal. Leanne cost the tribe the immunity challenge, Eliza was still annoying everyone, and of course, Rory was the last guy remaining. I wonder which one of these three will go home. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Vanuatu. Lisa, need to bring me your torch. Yep, Lisa would end up being the boots here, and you won't believe why. Amy told Lisa she was gonna gather some food, to which Lisa said she wanted to come along with her just in case. Now, either Lisa was making a joke, or she meant just in case they were gonna strategize. However, Amy took this as just in case you get voted out. So with Amy being Amy, she somehow took the target off of Leanne, Eliza, and Rory, and got the majority votes onto Lisa, after she simply made a slight offhand comment. Good lord, Amy is vicious. Rory knew he had escaped elimination by the thinnest of margins, and if Yasser attended another tribal council, more than likely, he wouldn't be able to scrape by this time. So, he literally put his faith into his own hands at the slingshot challenge, winning immunity for Yasser. So on the Pevy, you would think one of the two ladies would be a lock to go home, especially since that would make it a 5-5 gender split going into the merge. But the older men simply connected with Twilight and Julie more than they connected with John K. John did himself no favors here, as instead of campaigning to the guys for one of the ladies, and how stupid it would be for them to make a potential fatal mistake of going down in the numbers heading into the merge, he targets Chad as he feels Chad will be too much of a jury threat at the end. Um, can somebody tell John is still the freaking pre-merge? This all would steal John's fate as he was voted out unanimously. John, tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Take it easy. At the immunity challenge of episode 8, Jeff shocked the final 10 with the announcement of a merge, with Sarge winning the first individual immunity of the season. With the women having the 6-4 majority, it seemed like the men were in trouble, with Rory being the target, but the men were confident that they had Julie and Twyla on their side, and their target was Amy after Rory told them how threatening she was. But at tribal council, Twyla and Julie sucked to gender lines, and Rory was blindsided in a 6-4 vote. Rory, the tribe has spoken. With Chris, Sarge, and Chad on the outside, there was little they could really do. It was clear to them that Eliza was an outsider and tried to use that to their advantage, whether that be getting the girls to butt out Eliza or getting Eliza to join their side. But in the end, they just simply couldn't get the numbers as Sarge and Chad became the first and second jury members respectively. This brings us to the final seven, which in my opinion, is one of the greatest episodes in Survivor history. This episode featured the loved ones visit and both the contestants and their loved ones would compete in the immunity challenge. Chris knew he had to win, even saying that to his wife during the challenge. However, with the help of her girlfriend, Amy won immunity. So, Chris looked to be all but done for, right? Well, not so fast. After being a pain in everyone's ass for the past month, the woman finally had enough of Eliza, and figured sending her home before the final mail would show Eliza just how much they resented her. So, Eliza's now the easy boot, right? Well, not so fast times two. Knowing they're at the bottom of the Amy, Julie, Leanne trio, Scout and Twyla, who have been close allies all game, made a pitch to Chris to work with them in the end game, and that they could blindside Leanne tonight to take over the majority. But it was up to him to convince Eliza of this plan. Chris told Eliza of this massive opportunity for the two of them to go from the bottom to the top. But Eliza was still unsure of what to do, as she did not trust Twyla in the slightest. But at Tribal, with really no other choice, the unlikely four of Scout, Twyla, Chris, and Eliza banded together to blindside Leanne in a 4-3 vote. Leanne, 
Travis Barker. Seriously, what an unbelievable vote. Coming into the episode, Chris and Eliza were pretty much all but guaranteed to be the boot. And if a flip did happen, you would expect it to be on a power player like Amy or Twyla. Yet, it was Leanne of all people that would somehow be the boot in all this craziness. Just freaking wild how this vote came together. And yeah, speaking of wild, Amy is shocked at this development as she had been in control all game. And now suddenly, she was on the bottom in the blink of an eye. At the reward challenge though, Amy got exactly what she needed as her, Eliza, and Chris won reward. Amy apologized to Eliza for being so cocky all game and desperately tried to integrate herself back into the majority. This made Eliza think twice about her game, as yes, Amy had turned on her, but still, she had a lot more in common with Amy and Julie, as opposed to her new alliance members of Chris, Scout, and Twyla. At the immunity challenge, it came down to Amy and Chris, and unfortunately for Amy, she couldn't save herself from the chopping block, as Chris won his first immunity. The majority four planned to vote for Amy, but were worried Eliza would flip to Julie and Amy's side, and at Tribal, Eliza even reminded Twyla of how untrustworthy she was, as she called her out on her broken promise she made with Amy. But in the end, Eliza reluctantly used her head over her heart and sent Amy to the jury in a 4-2 vote. Amy, Travis Bogan. Twyla was beyond pissed at Eliza for calling her out in front of the jury. This was exactly what the outsider Julie needed, and she aligned with Eliza after this, as the two of them agreed that Twyla must be next to go. Things got even better for Julie as she won the final five reward challenge and smartly brought Chris with her on reward, as all of a sudden, he was now the swing boat. Julie tried to use her flirty personality to persuade Chris to join her and Eliza's side, but Chris assured Scott and Twyla that he was with them when he returned. At the immunity challenge, Eliza secured herself a spot in the final four with her first immunity win. Both pairs of Twyla and Scout and Julie and Eliza campaigned for Chris's vote. At Tribal Council, Chris smartly stuck with Twyla and Scout, the weaker pair, and far more hated than Julie, as she became the fifth member of the jury. But hey, she got the real prize in all of Survivor for female players, as she and Jeff dated for four years. Julie, Travis spoken. The finale starts with Eliza obviously pissed at Chris, but Chris explains that he just simply wanted revenge against Julie after she flipped on him at the merge, and that he was on board with Eliza to go to the final two. Chris gained even more power by winning his second immunity of the season. Eliza was positive that Chris would save her, as since Twilight and Scout were obviously taking each other to the end, it would make sense for Chris to expand his options. However, Chris still felt he had a far better chance against Twilight and Scout in the final immunity challenge, and blindsided Eliza in a 3-1 vote. The 15th person voted out of Survivor Vanuatu. Eliza, you need to bring me your torch. Eliza, trap spoken. The final three are awakened by Jeff on the morning of day 38, where they honor their fallen comrades before entering their final immunity challenge. The three had to hold a bow and arrow for as long as possible in a warrior pose. Scout obviously dropped out first, and after over an hour, Twyla slipped, giving Chris his third and most important immunity. And at Tribal, knowing Twyla would be far more hated than Scout, Chris used his soul vote to eliminate one of the greatest old players in Survivor history, in Scout Cloud Lee. 16th person voted out of Survivor Vanuatu. Scout, you need to bring me a torch. Scout, tribe has spoken. Twyla and Chris faced off against the jury, who, while not quite as bad as the previous season's all-star jury, pretty much everyone was pissed at the two for their lies and backstabs. But while Twyla couldn't hide her blunt personality, Chris delivered one of the greatest final tribal council performances of all time, only just behind Todd. He not only apologized to the people he backstabbed, but he played up to their ego as well, acting like he was heartbroken he had to eliminate them for being such awesome people. This amazing performance, combined with Chris's insane underdog story, led him to winning Survivor Vanuatu in a 5-2 vote. The winner of Survivor Vanuatu. My god, what an insane win. From being a possible meme-worthy first boot, to being down in the number 6-1 to to the woman, in a season theme literally designed as men versus women, Chris was able to somehow overcome it all to win Vanuatu. 
Now, whether you think Vanuatu is a little too slow or indeed an underrated to amazing season of Survivor, you cannot overlook just how unbelievable Chris's Vanuatu story is. Thank you guys so much for watching Survivor Vanuatu in 15 minutes. As you can tell, this was a lot of fun as I feel this season is so underrated. Speaking of underrated, I say that describes my channel as well. So make sure to smash that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed these videos and Survivor in general as I post weekly Survivor vids along with these in blank minute videos. As usual, let me know what you guys think about Survivor Vanuatu in the comments below. And until next time, have a good one, guys.